Hi, welcome to Rapacious Reads. I'm Rebecca. Today we're going to be discussing why Canadians love Russian literature. And of course, this is completely objective and I represent all Canadians. I'm speaking specifically about the golden age of Russian literature, uh, the 19th century. So first let's establish that Canada and Russia are similar countries. We're both massive fuck-off territories. Although Russia is a little bit bigger, it's got 8 million square kilometers on us. Now what would we do with that extra space? Put in a pool. Um, we both have relatively low population densities. Uh, I mean, actually massively low, super low, very low. Um, and the population that we do have is clustered along borders. Uh, we both speak French. And uh, it's friggin' cold where we live. Uh, you don't know how gratifying it was to see a love story enacted on ice when Levin is wooing Kitty um, while ice skating uh, in Anna Karenina. Uh, it was beautiful. Um, and we both have relatively low GDPs um, compared with our neighbor, or neighbors in Russia's case. Um, okay, so let's get into the literature. Catherine the Great, when she ruled, instituted a rule that nobles should be speaking French, or like a tradition that nobles should be speaking French, um, and sort of uplifted uh, French culture in Russia and said, you know, this is what we, what should be exemplified, this is what we should strive for, um, and that sort of thing. So in, uh, in Russian literature, the dialogue will often be in French with the surrounding text in Russian. Um, and then when they're translated uh, into English, the, the French dialogue will usually remain. And as a Canadian, it's very gratifying to be able to, to read the dialogue uh, straight off the page. Now, um, when you look at French culture in Russia, you see this um, derision of Russian, Russian culture and this sort of hatred for yourself um, on the inside of it. Um, you're you're trying to be something that you're not and you're you're never going to be french and the french kind of hate you um uh but you but you love it and you want to be like that anyways and you get a little bit of that um in canada with our consumption of american media uh we're just bombarded with american television and um american literature i for one didn't read any canadian literature in high school I was trying to do the read my country tag and I realized that I don't know enough Canadian books. Um, uh, yeah, so we, we have a, an inferiority uh, with our own culture. But where it is different is in how Russia treats this inferiority. So in Canada, you get this really like sort of suck up -y sort of thing. We're gonna, we're gonna out good our inferiority. We're gonna have free healthcare for everyone and we're gonna be super liberal and we're gonna be nice. Um, but in Russia, you just kind of get this, eh, I murdered someone, what does it matter? I'm Russian, you expected better? You know, um, so you get this embrace um, of inferiority, uh, which is like super gratifying from a Canadian perspective. It's like something I wish we could do that we wouldn't take ourselves so seriously. Um, then it's also a little bit different in how it treats the provincial. So in English literature in the same period, you had this sort of, um, exaltation for provincial life and this looking back on the past and and wistfulness for a simpler time um, but in Russian literature we hate ourselves so why would we want to go backwards we we hate the serfs we hate the provincial life we want progress above all else um, and as a Canadian, we sort of also have this um, hatred for uh, people living um, on the outskirts of society, maybe people living on reserves. Um, uh, the wilderness should be open and wild and uh, people living there is kind of like a weird concept because um, Canada has like one of the biggest percentages of urban populations in the world. So now I wanted to do a specific case study um, of this provincial thing that I was talking about with A Russian Gentleman by Sergei Aksumov. Now this is my personal favorite uh, Russian work. Um, 
but it's probably not very good. <laughs> like, I can't in good conscience recommend that you read it. Um, obviously, you should read Anna Karenina. Uh, very good. Best. Wonderful. Um, so the reason that, uh, that a Russian gentleman is, is not technically good is because it's a fictionalized memoir. Um, it's written from um, the title character's grandson's perspective. And he is describing how his parents met and fell in love and moved to Ufa and and sort of their their experience of their lives. And obviously it's something he couldn't really know about. Like he's he's making um insights into their reflections during this period and their internal life and and that's simply not possible. So it's a little it's a little weird um, that way. And it kind of reads like your grandpa telling you this story about how he walked uphill to school both ways. Like it's it's over dramatized um, in in the way your grandpa would do it, which I really enjoy. Um, but I it's it's it might not be for everyone. Okay. Okay. The novel takes place mainly in the province of Ufa, which is not along that heavily um, lived in border. So it's provincial. Um, the main character is a, a rich Russian landlord and he's angry and he's uneducated and he maybe mixes a little too much with his serfs. Um, so the urban people don't respect him and they don't respect his way of life um, at all. Um, so halfway through the novel you get um, the title or the narrator's mother coming to Ufa and she's lived in the city all her life and it's her experience of of this provincial way of life and how she looks down on everything and how um, how the city is so much better and so much more refined and that's where culture really is. And um, I, that's how I feel a lot of the time um, bringing home Torontonians or people from the south to where I live, which is fairly remote um, northern Canada. Um, I definitely relate with the whole provinciality and the uneducated um, sort of thing and the way that city people will look down on where you're living and your perspectives. I do come from a very anti-intellectual area, a massively blue collar area and um, and I had to I had to like leave my home to go to university. Um, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Um, so I just liked uh, that sort of cultural representation. So if you have any other insights into Russian and Canadian or Russian and American or any other sort of uh, literature, I would love to hear it. Um, and I'll see you next week.